In this video, I will show you how to do a motion analysis with SOLIDWORKS. So your first step is to create an assembly. Um, um, I don't show in this video how to do the assembly. There is like four parts. The base that is fixed, you can see the little F there. The short link that can rotate about the base. I didn't draw the pins. Uh, you can, but you don't need to. The long link that can uh, have a rotation with the short link and with the piston. So the yellow one is the piston. And if you uh, look at the mate, you will see that I make the coincidence between the plane of the base and the plane of the piston. So the pistons stay on uh, this horizontal line, uh, horizontal plane. So uh, it doesn't twist. Okay. In a car, in an engine, there's a chamber around that, but it's just for the machine analysis. So that will be your first step. The thing that you have to know is like the position of your assembly when you start the motion study will be the positions, the initial position of your motion analysis. So it's really important that you first center your assembly, uh, zoom, don't make too small, and select the position that you want. I will try to get the position as horizontal as possible. Let me check. Oh, that looks awesome. And I will put it in the middle um, and I will zoom in. If you decide to use, for example, a coincidence between the two lines or parallel to get your positions, you absolutely need to delete that mate after. Don't suppress only, just uh, absolutely delete. Otherwise, the machine is will not work. So that's your first step. Make sure that everything is safe. You will now click on motion study. Me, I will click right and do new motion study because I cannot delete the motion study I already made. So I click right, right and create a new motion study. But here you just click on the motion study number one. Here we go. So the first step will be to create a motor. I will select the little motor icon and I want a rotary motor and I want to do it on the face short link and you will you see automatically it create a motor in that direction that exactly what we want you don't need to do anything else you don't have to select anything in that box for the constant speed i will use run one rad per second um what does that mean is like it will do it will go at the omega your um, angular velocity of run rad per second that is super convenient so that's usually that will be just one uh, in your calculation by end. And uh, that means that it will take about two times pi to make a full revolution. So you click on the icon, okay. See there, by default, it creates a motion of five seconds, but for, again, for the revolution, we need two times pi, so 3.14 times two. Let's go to, we can do a little bit more like eight. So I move the black diamond to eight. You can increase the zoom a little bit, oops, so we can see the time frame there. For now, we have nothing with the parts. For that, we need to start the motion first. So we will click on play or play from start. It doesn't matter for, for the first time. Let's do play from start. And you will run your motion. And you will see it calculates the positions of each um, link and part at the same time. So this is your first step. Make sure that you save regularly. Now I will create a plot with the uh, assembly, assembly uh, with the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration of the piston. If you look at this little box there and you click right, you probably have just an animation and basic motion. You need to go on your add-in on the top and select the SOLIDWORKS motion. And okay, wait a little bit, here we go. And now you can select motion analysis. Oops. Hmm. So don't look at this graph, I will redo it again. I, would, I didn't expect that to pop up. So now that we have motion analysis on that box, we can see the result and plots to calculate um, the position of the piston. So I will click on it, super easy. I want to do a displacement, oops, sorry, displacement. So I select the linear displacement and I select the axe component. So that will give me the position of the piston. So I want the piston and I need to uh, select um, an origin. 
so I will select inside this box the um, the um, Oh, why is it the short link? I don't want the short link. I want the base. Let me scroll up a little bit. Here we go, the base. And I will click create a, a new plot, enter. And I have a new plot. Okay, so probably yours should be plot one. Me, I did a few to uh, do some tests and before I record that. I will create another one. So I click again on the plot. I want to do displacement velocity or acceleration. I want to do the linear velocity. I want the x components. If you select the magnitude, it will just give you a positive value, but you want to know if the velocity increase or decrease. And you want the velocity of the piston with the base as the zero of your um, X displacement and X velocity. And you don't want to create a new plot, you want to add to an existing plot, and you want to add to this one, plot number 12, and I click Enter. So now I have the uh, velocity that is red. Try to remember the color. The first one was blue, that was a displacement. The second one, the velocity was red. And one last, up oh, this one, oops, acceleration, linear acceleration complement of the piston from the base. I want to add it to the existing plot that is plot number 12 and enter. Here we go. You have your graph. If you, um, oops, let's move it this and go back to play from start, you will see the motion. And at the same time, you will see where you are on the graph with this vertical red line. Well, awesome. Now, how do we analyze that? I found there is a few steps to do before you can analyze this. You see those labels, they are very small. So you click right on the labels and labels property. And let's change the font for 40. And remember, this one on the left is the acceleration, that the one that is green. So change the color for green. Oops, so that will match the color of the um, plot. Velocity, label properties, velocity is in red. So I will select red and I will put it big. And the linear displacement, label properties, uh, this blue. Yeah, it's very small, I know. Uh, oops, didn't change the size of that. If you want, you can also remove like me, I have to fix eight, seven edges because, um, yeah, let's do it. Text, because I have done it a few times. <laughs> Oops, I will change level properties for the velocity. You should be good. Maybe you have a one. If you want to remove it, just um, um, remove the use feature name and change it. And I will change the text for this one too. Here we go. So, oh, and this one too, the time in second, we cannot see anything. So let's change that and let's put the size of the font at 40. Okay, that's the first steps. The second thing that I like to do is changing the um, font of the scale, but also I have the same scale for the three axes. Because if you look at the acceleration, right now it's going from minus 17 to 10 inches per second square. Velocity minus 12 to 12. So at least the zero is the middle. And the linear displacement from six to 26. So let's change the scale. So click right, axis properties, and you can change the scale. I unselect all of them and I will select the almost the lower. So the lower is minus 17. So let's go minus 20. And the maximum one is 26. I know they are not the same unit, but at least we will have the zero at the same location. Major units, I will use 10. Oops. 10. And minor unit, I will use 5. I don't forget also to change the font size. Uh, you don't need to go to 40, maybe 24 is enough. Here we go. You do the same with the axis properties for the velocity. So remember, go scale, remove those four little check box, uh, minus 20 to plus 30, and major unit 10, and minor unit 5. And the font, I put it at 24. Okay. And same thing for the linear displacement scale. I change it to 
minus 20, 30, 10, and 5, and the font to 24. Okay, and this time in second, access properties. Let's just ch change the font for 24. Here we go. So now we have a graph um, with the same scale for the three value. And we can check if it makes sense. Does it make sense? So this is the zero. Okay. What do we see? We see that the displacement decrease until going to about six inches, increase again and decrease. So this is the position of the piston, you see, going to the left and going back to the right and increase again. If you look at the velocity in red, when the velocity is negative, so from there to this point, the displacement decreases. Make sense? When the velocity is zero, the displacement is at an extremum and it's a minimum at that point. And now the uh, velocity is positive, so this displacement increases. Velocity at zero, maximum. Velocity negative, displacement decreases. Acceleration. Acceleration is negative up to there. Velocity decreases up to there with a minimum. Acceleration is positive all the way. Velocity increase with different degree of increasing because of the acceleration change. And when the acceleration is zero, the velocity change is at the maximum and decrease again. So those graphs completely make sense. Okay, Your zero is there. So it's important to change your scale. You can click right, uh, oops, somewhere, not on the axis. Let me try, here, here we go. And you can do chart properties to change the plot name. You can copy to clipboard to copy in any document. You can export the CVS there. But I will show you something that you can also do that I like it a little bit better. Uh, you can change the time frame there. So here is the time frame. So change it to the smallest velocity 0.1. And what you could click on is this little table, calculate the motion study. Oops, it's going slower and it's making the um, all the way oops, to the seven seconds. And now you can click, uh, let me see, I open, oh no, I know where it is, sorry, it's not on that one. So it's calculating again, that's fine. This is on the result. If you click on your plot 12, all the way to the back and you click right, you can do ex export to spreadsheet. So I will export to spreadsheet. I will show you. Now what is great is you have an Excel file with the data, okay, uh, with the time frame. Oh, it's even smaller. So we see a time frame of 0 0.04 seconds. Uh, you have your displacement, velocity, acceleration. And if you go on the second tab, you have the plot of the graph. So you uh, see again the um, displacement and uh, the velocity and the acceleration and they are all on the same graph and they all have the same um, axis scale. So it's very convenient. If you want to get some information, like for example, if you want to know what is the position at 90 degree there, okay? There's different options. You can start play and try to stop when you are 90 degrees. So I will try that. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Here we go. Let's say one more. Okay, I miss it. But anyway, this red line uh, will be is exactly at the time that I stop the motion. And if you look at the value there, you can have the value, and you can have the value if you click on the graph. I think maybe not. Um, I thought you you can not like a MATLAB. Oh, you see, I did the little dot. Yes. So on 11 inches at 0 0.84 seconds, for example. You see, you can have the data. Or you can go on your Excel, and your Excel sheet will give you the, the value. So if you want a 90 degrees, 90 degrees is pi divided by two radians. So that will be at pi divided by two radians. That is 
1.57. So if you scroll at 1.57, the closer that I found is this one. So that will give me the position of the piston 6.6 .6 inches, uh, the velocity minus 2.88, and 5.49. That's funny, I think it's different than what I got at 1.50. Kind of different than what I got in the. Okay, we'll try to understand that. But uh, you have all your data that you can use. Maybe it plots at the at a different beginning at a different uh, spot, but you can use your data from there. So that's also convenient. So that it is. It's not super difficult, but what is super important is uh, the rotary motor select the correct planes, uh, the plots something correct the correct bodies, the pistons compared to the base, make sure that you change the scales of your labels to compare apples with apples. <laughs> I know it's not apples with apples because one of them is inches, one of them is inches per second and inches per second square, but at least they have the same scale. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. You have a little, little PDF in the comments to help you with those steps too. Bye-bye.